Number 19, Yarayi Solorio Rivera. 18-year-old Yanali Solorio Rivera and her daughter were fast asleep when they were shot dead in their Fresno home in October 2022. Suspicion quickly fell on Yanali's sister, 22-year-old Yarayi Solorio Rivera, and Yarayi's boyfriend, 26-year-old Martin Arroyo Morales. The couple initially denied any involvement in the double homicide, but eventually they cracked under pressure from detectives and confessed to the crime. When asked whether she meant to shoot her sister, Yarayi said yes. During a court hearing in 2023, lead detective Justin Baroni testified that the sisters had once been close friends, but their relationship soured. Yarayi also allegedly admitted that she was jealous of the attention Yanali was receiving as a new mom. Yarayi and Martin Arroyo Morales are both facing murder charges in connection with Yanali's death. In October 2023, roughly a year after the shooting, prosecutors announced that they plan to seek the death penalty against Yarayi. However, they're not pursuing capital punishment against Arroyo Morales. And at the moment, the case is ongoing. Number 18. Claire Miller the parents of Claire Miller and her wheelchair-bound sister Helen were fast asleep in February 2021 when Claire stabbed Helen to death at the family's home in Mannheim Township, Pennsylvania. She then dialed 911 in a hysterical state and confessed to the crime. Responding officers arrived shortly after 1 a.m. to find Claire standing outside covered in blood, trying to wash her hands in the snow. Helen was found dead in her bedroom with a stab wound to the neck, and Claire was charged with her murder. Prosecutors acknowledged that Claire was mentally ill and experiencing a crisis when she committed the crime, but they argued that her behavior was planned and deliberate. They also thought that she should be held accountable for her actions. The defense claimed that Claire was hallucinating and experiencing psychosis when she murdered Helen. She was allegedly hearing voices that told her to kill her sister and carried out the horrific act in an attempt to silence the commands. Claire's young age and mental health issues received limited sympathy from the judge, who ruled that the teen was mentally ill but not disabled. The judge then barred her case from being transferred to juvenile court. To avoid a trial, Claire pleaded guilty to third-degree murder in exchange for a sentence of 12 to 40 years. She will most likely see freedom again someday, and one can only hope that she's receiving some measure of psychiatric care as she serves her time. Number 17. Barry Wells just days after Christmas in 2017, a young mother named Tony Wells was found murdered in the basement of her brownstone apartment building in Brooklyn's Crown Heights neighborhood. Suspicion quickly fell on the 22-year-old's husband, 29-year-old Barry Wells, who'd been arrested just months earlier for allegedly strangling Tony to the point of unconsciousness and dragging her down a staircase. On the day of her murder, Tony had called the police several times and reported that she was afraid Barry was going to kill her. A pair of NYPD officers were dispatched to the residence, but they never got out of their patrol car to see what was going on inside. Both cops were briefly suspended, but managed to avoid losing their jobs, much to the outrage of Tony's family. Barry Wells was charged with second-degree murder, which could carry a sentence of up to life in prison if convicted. But more than six years later, the case is still ongoing. Wells remains in custody at Rikers Island, where he was busted in 2021 for allegedly bribing guards to smuggle a cell phone into the jail. In addition to the murder charge, he now faces one count of third-degree bribery and two counts of promoting prison contraband. If convicted as charged in the cell phone smuggling case, he could face up to 15 years behind bars. Number 16. Sarah Gray in October 2019, police in Franklin, Virginia pulled up to the scene of a reported disturbance at a local residence, where they found 24-year-old Sarah Gray on top of her 27-year-old brother, Zachary. Sarah was holding the young man's chest and allegedly told officers that she had stabbed him. Zachary was rushed to the hospital where he died from his injuries. In the meantime, Sarah was taken down to the police station for questioning. She told investigators that the fight between her and Zachary began when her brother chased the vehicle she was riding in down the street while shouting obscenities at her. Not wanting to get sucked into the drama, the man driving the vehicle dropped Sarah off and wisely left the area. The altercation between the siblings quickly became physical, according to Sarah, who accused Zachary of choking her and then leaving the room. 
So when Zachary re-entered the room just moments later, Sarah pulled a knife from her purse and stabbed him. She claimed that she feared her brother was going to kill her. Authorities charged Sarah with second-degree murder, and there have been no further updates on the case since the story first broke. She doesn't appear to be in county lockup or state custody, indicating that the case has most likely been squared away. Number 15. Adnan Palinkovic The sleepy Staten Island neighborhood of New Dorp was shaken awake in October 2021 when a family fight escalated into deadly violence. 18-year-old Adnan Palinkovic and his parents, 51-year-old Maniri and 54-year-old Enver, had no prior history of domestic disputes. But a series of squabbles gave way to rising tensions between Adnan and his folks, and the Palinkovic's strained relationship with their son eventually reached its breaking point. According to police, some of the disagreements revolved around what Adnan watched on TV, which included adult content. All hell broke loose one evening when an argument erupted between Adnan and Maniri at the dinner table, and at some point during the bickering, Adnan allegedly grabbed his dad's gun and shot his mother in the chest. Maniri died from her injuries, and Enver suffered a minor cut to the chest but was otherwise unharmed. He told police that Adnan had shot at him and missed, and he said that he didn't know what Atin and his mother were arguing over prior to the shooting. Responding officers found Adnan a few blocks from the home with his father's gun in hand. He allegedly admitted to shooting his mother and trying to kill both his parents, and was charged with attempted murder, assault, criminal possession of a weapon, menacing, and reckless endangerment. His mental health soon landed at the center of his court hearings, and as of early 2024, Adnan remains held in a medical unit at Rikers Island. Neighbors were shocked by the news of the gruesome crime, telling the press that the Palinkovichs were a quiet family who homeschooled their kids and kept mostly to themselves. And unfortunately, the nature of the argument that resulted in Manira's death remains unclear. Number 14. Michael Mulgrew 69-year-old Cheryl Mulgrew and her husband, 71-year-old Eugene, tried their best to help their troubled 34-year-old son, Michael. He had a history of chronic unemployment and mental health issues, and in November 2023, his parents noticed that he was becoming symptomatic. Hoping to get Michael some help, Cheryl called her local police department, which sent their mobile psychiatric emergency screening services to the family's home in Barnegat, New Jersey. By the time they arrived, Michael had left the residence on foot. Later that night, Cheryl called the police to let them know that Michael had returned home and was calm. She said that she planned to take her son to a doctor in the morning, and the conversation ended. But just 12 hours later, Cheryl called the police again and asked them to come to the house. Responding officers arrived to find blood on the front door. They noticed more blood throughout the house as they made their way to the master bedroom, where they found Cheryl and Eugene dead from multiple stab wounds with the murder weapon nearby. Michael was found and arrested a short while later. During questioning, he allegedly admitted to being a habitual drug user and mentioned a spell of drug-induced psychosis that he'd experienced five years earlier while living in Vietnam. He further explained that when he left the house the day before, he believed his parents were going to hurt him. The next morning, Michael argued with his mother and father over their request for him to do chores, and the disagreement apparently sent him into a murderous rage. After killing his parents, he filled a backpack with some bottled water, a towel, and a book to read, and hid in the woods before eventually crossing paths with the police. Michael remains held without bail at the Ocean County Jail on two counts of murder and weapon-related charges, but we'll have to wait and see what consequences he'll receive. Number 13. Lorenzo Johnson When a relative told 24-year-old Lavoris Johnson that they didn't think his girlfriend was good for him in October 2023, he lost his temper and began throwing things inside the family's Indianapolis home. He then exited the house, and the family overheard gunshots just moments after he stepped out the door. Emergency responders were called to the scene, where they found Lavoris lying dead on the ground with gunshot wounds. And standing nearby was the victim's 22-year-old brother, Lorenzo Johnson, who was taken into custody for questioning. During the interview, Lorenzo allegedly admitted to killing his brother, which he described as a stupid mistake. He told investigators that he followed Lavoris outside in an attempt to calm him down and out of a desire to protect his family. 
According to law enforcement, Lorenzo said that he thought introducing a gun into the situation would prompt his brother to leave, but in hindsight, he realized that he should have probably just avoided the confrontation altogether and left the property. It's too late for that now, though, and Lorenzo remains held without bond on a murder charge at the Marion County Jail. Number 12. Anthony DeBella After serving in Operation Desert Storm during the early 1990s, U.S. Navy veteran Anthony DeBella was diagnosed as bipolar and schizoaffective. The upstate New York resident went on medication in 2003 and stayed on it until 2019 when he attended a healing church service and became convinced that he was cured. Not long after he stopped taking his medication, DeBella became irrationally paranoid. The downward spiral that ensued took an irreversible and tragic turn in April 2022, when the then 52-year-old dialed 911 and announced that he was killing his sister, 67-year-old Wanda Paoli. During the conversation, he told the dispatcher that Wanda was a witch and that he was killing her on the porch of their home in Lyme. First responders arrived to find Wanda dead from stab wounds to the head, neck, and face. She'd been murdered using a bayonet and awl, a small pointed tool that's typically used for piercing holes. At the scene, DeBella told police that he killed his sister because she was getting in the way of his communication with God. The sibling's 89-year-old mother was found unharmed inside the house, and DeBella was charged with murder, assault with intent to cause serious injury, and criminal possession of a weapon. He pleaded guilty to a reduced second-degree murder charge and was sentenced to 18 years to life in prison. During DeBella's sentencing hearing, his nephews, Wanda's adult sons, delivered a brutally honest victim impact statement, telling their uncle that he was nothing to them. They also said that they hope he rots in prison and never gets out. DeBella was unapologetic, instead launching into a rambling rant about how he believed Wanda was going to kill their mother because she was a true crime fanatic who watched TV shows about serial killers. He said that he believed, without a shadow of a doubt, that he saved his mother's life by killing his sister. A prosecutor eventually interrupted DeBella's disparaging speech, reminding the court that the purpose of the hearing was to sentence Wanda's killer, not to badmouth the deceased woman. During a jailhouse interview with local station WWNW just 10 days later, DeBella expressed remorse for his actions. He was back on medication and believes that if he'd never stopped taking it, Wanda would still be alive. DeBella further explained that he'd essentially lost his grip on reality by the time he decided to kill his sister. Before committing the murder, he covered his weapons with a cream containing silver to prevent Wanda from returning to life as a werewolf. At the time, the perceived need to take all these measures seemed very real to DeBella, who apologized to his family members, including his nephews, and said that he hopes they forgive him someday. He also revealed that he plans to meet a woman he began corresponding with while in jail, and said he looks forward to the wedding. Number 11. Emmanuel Manny Newman during a night of drinking at his Indianapolis apartment in December 2022, 31-year-old Joshua Hobson got into an argument with his cousin, 38-year-old Emmanuel Manny Newman. At around 2 a.m., Hobson's girlfriend drove Newman away from the residence in an attempt to de-escalate the situation. But the men continued their disagreement over the phone, and it wasn't long before Newman said that he was on his way back to Hobson's apartment to kill him. Hobson went outside to meet his cousin, despite his girlfriend's attempts to keep him inside and to keep the two away from each other. Surveillance footage would later show Newman pulling into the parking lot and exiting his car with what appeared to be a rifle. The man could be seen approaching Hobson and his girlfriend. He then shot Hobson and fled the scene in his vehicle. Sadly, Hobson died from his injuries and Newman was charged with his murder. The suspect remains behind bars at the Marion County Jail as he awaits trial. Number 10. Candace Craig and Salia Hardy In a horror scene that would churn the stomachs of even the most experienced investigators, 71-year-old Margaret Craig was murdered, dismembered, and grilled at her home in Landover, Maryland in May of 2023. Police discovered the gruesome aftermath of the crime while performing a welfare check at the senior citizen's residence. Margaret's daughter, 44-year-old Candace Craig, answered the door and allowed officers to come in and look around. But immediately upon entering the house, they noticed the unmistakable stench of death. The horrifying odor led them to the basement, where they found three garbage bags containing body parts with blood and tissue spilled onto the floor. 
Evidence at the scene indicated that Margaret's killer had most likely stabbed her to death and cut her body up with a chainsaw. The culprit then tried to dispose of her remains by burning them on a charcoal grill and in a bonfire. While police were initially unsure of the motive behind the sickening crime, court records revealed that Margaret had recently accused Candace of credit card fraud. This led investigators to believe that a heated argument may have preceded the murder. Authorities believe Candace killed her mother, while Candace's 19-year-old daughter, Salia Hardy, Margaret's granddaughter, stands accused of helping to dismember the victim's body. Candace is facing a second-degree murder charge, and Salia faces one count of accessory after the fact. But their cases appear to be ongoing. Number 9. David Earl Johnson In February 2020, a 911 caller who was later identified as 57-year-old David Earl Johnson reported that he had just had an incident with his cousin, 58-year-old Michael Washington, at Washington's Waco, Texas home. Responding officers found Johnson a few blocks from the residence on their way to the scene and picked him up. Inside the house, they found Washington's deceased body wrapped in a comforter with severe trauma to the back of the head. Johnson, who lived in Fort Worth but had been visiting Washington for the past month, had bludgeoned his cousin to death using a three-pound sledgehammer. He allegedly waited eight to ten hours after killing Washington before calling the police. According to Johnson's version of events, Washington had threatened him with the sledgehammer, which he managed to wrestle away. He also accused Washington of threatening him with a machete and claimed that he'd acted in self-defense. A toxicology test showed that Washington had more than two times the legal limit of alcohol in his system at the time of his death, indicating that drunkenness may have played a role in the deadly disagreement between cousins. However, Johnson's story didn't add up to investigators, especially considering his violent criminal history, which included past convictions for attempted murder and aggravated assault. He was charged with murder with an enhancement for being a habitual offender, and in 2022, a jury found him guilty. Johnson was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 30 years before becoming eligible for parole. That means he'll be almost 90 years old by the time he even has a chance at seeing freedom again. Number 8. Stephen Woods During the pre-dawn hours one morning in September 2023, police in Kansas City, Missouri responded to reports of a shooting at a local residence. Officers arrived to find a woman suffering from multiple gunshot wounds on the garage floor. And inside the home, they found a woman's son, 18-year-old Joseph Michael Bonacorso, unresponsive with gunshot wounds. Bonacorso died at the scene, and his mother was rushed to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. The young man's stepfather, 45-year-old elementary school teacher Stephen Woods, and his wife had gotten into a heated argument on their way home from a pool party earlier that evening. Apparently, the disagreement occurred after Woods was caught texting with another woman. After he went to sleep later that evening, his wife snuck into the bathroom with his phone and locked the door. Woods allegedly busted the bathroom door down to get his phone back, then threw his wife into the bathtub several times, and at that point, a female witness tried to intervene. The witness later told police that Woods charged at her, causing her to flee into her bedroom and lock the door. She also accused Woods of busting through her door and breaking her TV. Fearing for her safety, she called Bonacorso, who wasn't home at the time. Accompanied by two friends, he returned to the residence and attempted to confront his stepfather, who'd locked himself in a bedroom. Meanwhile, his friends helped his mother and the other female victim out of the house. Eventually, Woods exited the bedroom with a gun and shot Bonacorso and his mother. The suspect would later claim that he'd overheard Bonacorso making a comment about killing him, causing him to fear for his life. In an audio recording of the confrontation, Bonacorso could be heard shouting, Are you going to shoot me like you did? my dad at Woods. He was referencing an incident that occurred in 2016 when Woods shot his father, John Bonacorso, in what was later deemed a justified act of self-defense. But Woods was unable to explain away his more recent actions, and he failed to persuade investigators that the gun discharged accidentally. He's currently facing charges of first-degree murder, assault, armed criminal action, and unlawful use of a weapon. Number 7. Demarcus and Darkus Coley A holiday gathering turned terrifyingly violent for a Florida household on Christmas Eve in 2023 when a pair of teen brothers and their 23-year-old sister got into a heated argument at their grandmother's home in Largo. Demarcus Coley, Darkus Coley, Abriel Baldwin, and several other family members had gone Christmas shopping earlier that day. 
And after returning to the sibling's grandmother's house, Demarcus got upset because he believed that their mom had bought more gifts for Darkus. As the brothers argued, Demarcus allegedly pulled a gun and threatened to shoot his brother in the head. But the young men were separated by their uncle, who removed Demarcus from the home. By that point in the evening, Abriel was leaving to go to work. As she walked out the door, she offered Demarcus some sisterly advice and urged him not to fight with family on a holiday. According to authorities, Demarcus hurled a slew of derogatory names at Abriel and threatened to shoot her, then made good on his word by pulling out his gun and firing a bullet into the young woman's chest. She died from her injuries, leaving behind two children who will now grow up without their mother. Enraged at Demarcus for shooting their sister, Darkus allegedly ran outside with his own firearm and shot his brother. He then threw his gun into a bush, fled the scene on foot, and called his mom. Demarcus survived after undergoing emergency stomach surgery and is now facing charges of first-degree murder, gun possession, and child abuse. Darkus was charged with attempted first-degree murder and tampering with evidence. Both brothers remain in custody, and the next step in their cases will be for the court to determine whether they'll be tried as adults. The senseless tragedy highlights Florida's ongoing problem with young people getting their hands on stolen and illegal guns. According to Pinellas County Sheriff Bob Galtieri, who described the argument over Christmas presents as a typical sibling disagreement that went terribly wrong due to the teens being armed with deadly weapons. Galtieri said that both Coley boys are well known to law enforcement and have serious records which include previous gun charges and arrests for burglarizing vehicles just months before the Christmas Eve shootout. The sheriff remarked that gun violence among teens is the worst he's ever seen. He also said that he hopes the young defendants get locked up as an example of what others who follow in their footsteps can expect. Number 6. Kelly Tinsley While responding to a call about an injured woman at a home in Barefoot Bay, Florida in early 2024, deputies found 69-year-old Cheryl Mura lying dead in a pool of blood just inside the doorway. She'd been stabbed to death and was covered in defensive wounds, indicating that she had fought for her life during the frenzied attack. Cheryl's 49-year-old daughter, Kelly Tinsley, was reportedly lying on a pillow in the hallway when police arrived. She allegedly told investigators that she and her mother had gotten into a physical altercation the previous evening after Cheryl made a comment about how Kelly would be a better mom if she found a bigger place to live. Tinsley claimed that her mother came at her with a knife, leading to a struggle over the weapon that landed both women on the floor. According to an affidavit, Tinsley got a hold of the knife and warned Cheryl to stop coming at her while holding the blade to the senior citizen's neck. But unfortunately, the fight ended with Cheryl dying from a stab wound. Nauseated by the sight of all the blood, Tinsley covered her mom's body with a blanket. She washed up, changed her clothes, and then lay down in the hallway. Tinsley finally called 911 seven hours later at around 5 a.m. Her claims of self-defense seemed suspicious to detectives, who noticed that Tinsley didn't appear to have any defensive wounds or cuts to her face, despite claiming that Cheryl had struck her in the mouth with the knife. She showed police some injuries to her leg and hand, which she claimed were sustained during the fight with her mother. But they weren't consistent with the type of injuries law enforcement would expect to see, based on the story Tinsley gave them about what had happened. She was arrested on one count of manslaughter reclassified with the use of a weapon and is currently being held at the Brevard County Jail as she awaits her next court date. Number 5. Gerald McDowell A family in mourning was gathered for a celebration of life event in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in April 2023 when a deadly argument broke out between siblings. 29-year-old Gerald McDowell, 27-year-old Antasha McDowell, and 18-year-old Kevinisha McDowell had just lost their 19-year-old brother, Kevin Dunn Jr., to gun violence the week before. They were selling plates of food to raise money for Dunn's burial when several family members got into a disagreement at around 10 p.m. While it's unclear exactly how the argument started, Gerald McDowell allegedly threatened to kill one of his siblings. Antasha tried to de-escalate the situation, but her efforts weren't enough to deter his attack. According to local news outlet BR Proud, Gerald was seen pulling a gun out from behind a curtain, removing the safety and opening fire on his sisters. 18-year-old Kevinisha, who'd recently become a first-time mother, died from a bullet wound to the head. Antisha was rushed to the hospital with serious injuries after being shot twice in the arm and torso. 
Shortly after the shooting, she reportedly said that Gerald had a history of drug use and had threatened to kill family members before, but she didn't think he was actually capable of acting on his words and was heartbroken when he did. The suspected shooter, Gerald McDowell, fled the scene on foot and was captured a few days later. He was charged with murder, attempted murder, and illegal use of a weapon, and remains behind bars at the East Baton Rouge Parish Jail pending the outcome of his case. Number 4. Rolf Johnson Late one night in August 2023, police in Lawrence, Indiana, were called to a local apartment complex over a domestic dispute. They arrived to find 27-year-old Oliver Johnson dead on the kitchen floor of his family's apartment with severe head trauma. He was clutching a wooden baseball bat and several firearms were recovered throughout the home. Included among the weapons was a holstered handgun that was found on a cot in the living room just feet away from where Oliver died. The 911 caller, identified in court documents as Oliver's sibling, reportedly told investigators that he awoke at his own apartment nearby to a phone call from his father, 53-year-old old Rolf Johnson. According to the sibling, Rolf claimed that Oliver had hit him during an argument and that he'd hit back. Acting on his father's instructions, the young man dialed 911 and headed over to the crime scene. Initial reports suggested that Rolf may have bludgeoned Oliver with a hammer, but his cause of death was determined to be a single gunshot wound. By the time police arrived, Rolf had fled in his vehicle. Luckily though, he was arrested without incident during a traffic stop a short while later and remains held without bail at the Marion County Jail on a murder charge. Number 3. Trinnell Brown 52-year-old Clemmy Brown and his wife, 42-year-old Soretta, were shot dead in their Spanish Fort, Alabama home during an argument with their son in early 2023. According to police, 25-year-old Trinnell Brown went to his parents' house on a Saturday afternoon to confront them about an ongoing family dispute. But what began as a verbal altercation turned physical when Trinnell allegedly opened fire on his mother and father with an assault rifle, shooting them both several times. He then dialed 911 and was still at the scene with the gun in his hand when deputies arrived. The seemingly disturbed young man complied with law enforcement's commands and was peacefully taken into custody. Trinnell faces two counts of capital murder in connection with his parents' death and remains held at the Baldwin County Jail amid the ongoing case. Although there were tensions in the family, there were no signs that Trinnell would take such extreme measures to settle the score, leaving investigators at a loss for a motive behind the crime. Shortly after the double homicide, a sheriff's department spokesperson told Fox 10 News that Trinnell had some history of mental health issues, but that he was functional enough to hold a job. A man identifying himself as Trinnell's uncle claimed that his nephew had been declared schizophrenic in several places where he'd lived in the past, including Pensacola, Florida, and Mobile County, Alabama. But professionals in Baldwin County, where the shooting occurred, had concluded that Trinnell was not schizophrenic. As a result, getting him proper help had proven to be a challenge. At the crime scene, deputies noticed that Trinnell showed a lack of emotion and didn't appear to be upset about his parents' deaths, which sounds like a possible sign that he wasn't mentally sound. For now, the outcome of the case remains to be seen. Number 2. Gabriel Fernandez on what began as a normal morning in September 2022, police were called to a home in Cape Coral, Florida, where they found 20-year-old Brian McKellop Jr. lying in a hallway with multiple gunshot wounds to the chest and back, and sadly, he was declared dead at a nearby hospital. The young man's stepfather, 53-year-old Gabriel Fernandez, allegedly admitted to shooting McKellop during a conversation with law enforcement outside the residence. Witnesses told investigators that McKellop had tried to intervene during an argument between his mother and Fernandez, who they claimed was intoxicated. They said Fernandez lost his temper and flew into a rage when McKellop tried to make the situation his business. The terrified victim was trying to run away when he was mercilessly gunned down. McKellop's ex-girlfriend, Carolina Diaz, told WINK News that it was in his character to always do what he believed was right, no matter the cost. It was a quality that made his father, Brian McKellop Sr., extremely proud. At the time of McKellop's death, he was just a few years out of high school and had recently achieved his lifelong dream of pursuing a career in the U.S. Marines. He likely never expected that his life would be cut short when he was just starting out 
and neither did his loved ones who were overcome by heart-wrenching grief. Fernandez was convicted of second-degree murder and shooting in a dwelling and was sentenced to 40 years in prison. By the time he gets out, if he's still alive by then, he'll be in his 90s, so it's very possible that he'll spend the rest of his life behind bars. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. Number one, William Stovall. A family was cleaning out the Orange County, Florida home of their matriarch following her death in October 2023 when someone asked 27-year-old William Stovall if he had his deceased elderly grandmother's phone in his possession. According to court documents, Stovall responded in a confrontational manner, saying, you ain't getting expletive, and then turned to walk away. Instead of just leaving, however, he allegedly turned back around and pulled a gun while cursing out his relative, then fired 10 shots in his family's direction. By the time police arrived at the scene, Stovall had fled the residence. Two people were taken to the hospital with gunshot wounds, and Stovall was arrested two weeks later. He was charged with three counts of attempted murder and two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. However, records show that he's no longer in custody, indicating that he most likely made bail, which was set at $62,000. Number 7. Woman acquitted of killing sister after father's pardon. On December 5th of 2017, Alvina, whose last name has remained a mystery, called police in a panic, stating that her sister had just been killed by robbers. The 15-year-old resident of Mahler District in Karachi claimed that robbers had made their way into the home and stabbed her sister, Alina, with a sharp object after she tried resisting the looting. The robbers, as Alvina stated, had fled the home, taking valuables such as jewelry and money along with them. Interestingly enough, the only witness to the alleged robbery was Alvina. She claimed that her parents and siblings were sound asleep while the commotion was taking place. Police apprehended Alvina as the prime suspect in her sister's killing, to which she confessed five days later. The case became sensationalized in Pakistani media as the Mahler murder. Further investigations revealed that Alvina had an accomplice, her fiance, Mazar. Alvina alleged that her sister had several objectionable images of her on her phone. She alleged that despite constantly pleading with her sister to delete them, Alina would not and instead blackmailed her with them. Family and friends recounted several incidents of the sisters fighting with one another, but chalked it all down to sibling rivalry. Mazar backed up Alvina's testimony and stated that she had confided in him about the alleged images and that despite trying to reason with Alina, she continued to blackmail her sister. Another account given by Alina's family stated that the sisters would get in constant rifts because Alvina would try to sneak her fiance into her parents' home. Alina revealed this to her parents, and this led to the two becoming estranged. Alvina maintained her testimony and stated that she was pushed to the point of having to kill her sister. While a court ruled her guilty of first-degree murder, the girl's father pardoned Alvina in late 2019. Nadim, their father, provided no reason for his decision, other than stating that he felt it was only fair to forgive Alvina for murdering Alina. Number 6. Unnamed sister charged with murder of adult brother. An obituary was set up for Jaworski Johnson in 2007, after the man was fatally stabbed back in July of the same year. The obituary read that Johnson, also known as Cowboy by his friends and family, will be mourned by a stepfather, a mother, two sons, two brothers, and five sisters. However, another news source cited that Johnson was actually stabbed to death by one of his sisters. The unnamed 16-year-old stabbed Johnson after the two had gotten into a heated confrontation. Not much is known about the incident besides the fact that the two had been arguing all night. Family members stated that the 16-year-old girl reached for a sharp object and stabbed her then 23-year-old adult brother. Johnson could not survive his injuries and died a few hours later. Not much is cited online about the incident. In fact, media outlets refrained from publishing the story because of the young girl's age during the incident. Friends and family gathered at the grieving family's home a few days after the incident to mourn the loss of not one, but two of the family's children. Number 5. Woman allegedly killed sister, found by brother-in-law. While Sandra LaMarquette is yet to confess to the brutal killing of her sister, there is enough evidence to incriminate her on charges of first or second degree murder. The 59-year-old resident of North Highlands, California, was arrested after fleeing the alleged scene of the crime, her home. On Tuesday morning, December 15th of 2021, 
police received a frantic 911 call from a man who wanted to report his wife being missing. The call was shortly followed by another from the same man stating that he found his wife lying lifeless at Marquette's home in North Highlands. The unnamed victim had been dropped off by her husband earlier in the day to Marquette's home. After she failed to respond, and so did Marquette, the woman's husband decided to go over to their destination. Police responding to the scene stated that the woman has been dead for several hours at that point. They believe that she died as a result of blunt force trauma. Marquette was nowhere to be seen. A search warrant was issued for the woman who was later apprehended near Jackson Street and Madison Avenue in North Highlands. She was apprehended without incident. Marquette is now being held in Sacramento County Jail on one felony count of murder. She's expected to appear in Sacramento County Superior Court Thursday. Number four, woman charged with stabbing twin sister to death. Anna Ramirez has posted a picture of herself with her identical twin sister, Amanda Ramirez, and a couple of the sibling's friends in the hours leading up to June 22nd of 2019. The two had been out partying the previous night, as was evident from the photo Anna had posted. However, Amanda recounted a different story of that night, three separate ones to be precise. The first one alleged that she had picked up a disheveled looking Anna from the side of the road, and the two of them then went to a friend's house where she passed out and died. The second one alleged that she had met up with Anna at their cousin's home, where the victim fell ill and had to retreat. The final version of the night of June 22nd stated that Amanda and Anna had gotten into a heated confrontation after a night of heavy drinking. The third version, which was ultimately what the court used to charge Amanda with her identical twin's murder, recounted that both sisters had been tussling, belligerently drunk back and forth. After a while, they both reached for a knife. Amanda got to the knife first and stabbed her sister repeatedly. In all likelihood, even if Amanda did not confess to the crime, there was still substantial evidence against her. For example, Anna's body was found at Amanda's apartment. Amanda's clothes were bloodstained, and the footprints leading to the scene of the crime were found to belong to Amanda. A court date was set for September of 2019, wherein Amanda confessed to the crime. She stated that not a day goes by that she doesn't look back on the crime and regret everything that led to it. Amanda closed her statement by apologizing to friends and family who had been traumatized by the incident. For the murder of her twin sister, Anna Ramirez, Amanda Ramirez received six years in prison. Siblings committing murder against one another is always troubling, but in this case, where the sisters were identical twins, is especially unusual. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you think a six-year sentence is a reasonable punishment? Let us know in the comments below, and make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. Number 3. Woman and Lover Kill Brother Over Marital Dispute Police in Chichawanti, Pakistan have apprehended a woman and her lover in connection to the murder of the woman's brother. The crime was committed in November of 2019. The woman, Maya, was one of seven children born to a couple in Karachi, Pakistan. Eli Asad Chima, the victim, was Maya's only brother. The siblings were born and raised in a Christian household. Maya had allegedly fallen in love with Edisham, a mobile shop owner and a Muslim. The couple had gotten married in court 10 months prior to the incident. Their union was strongly objected to by the woman's parents because Maya had allegedly accepted Islam. Chima had objected to the marriage and allegedly threatened to kill Maya and Edisham. The couple claimed to be in fear of their life after rumors started circulating that Chima had purchased guns. In November of 2019, Edisham visited Chima at his residence. According to his testimony, Chima was both verbally and physically assaulting Edisham. After a brief tussle, Edisham took an opportunity and poisoned Chima's drink. The victim then began foaming from the mouth and convulsing, at which point Maya emerged and began strangling Chima. Police recovered a cell phone recording Edisham had made, wherein the couple can be seen laughing while the victim is being strangled. The commotion alerted the neighbors and Chima's wife, who arrived to see the entire ordeal. The culprits then fled the scene on a motorbike. A police report was filed, and the couple was apprehended soon thereafter. Maya and Edisham are currently waiting trial for the murder of Eli Asad Chima. The couple has been booked under separate charges of murder in the first degree. Maya and Edisham have confessed to the murder during initial police investigation. Number two. Sister kills five-year-old brother for being annoying. Police in Chandigarh, India, 
have booked a 19-year-old in the alleged murder of her five-year-old brother. On October 6 of 2018, the sibling's parents returned from a trip to find that their young son was missing. They filed a missing persons report with the police on the same day. Earlier, the couple had left their 19-year-old daughter in charge of the house while they went out. The unnamed culprit was reportedly annoyed with her brother for following her around everywhere and hurling abuses at her all day long. She cited several incidents wherein her brother was being a nuisance and claimed to have gotten frustrated with the entire situation. On October 6th, the 19-year-old sister strangled her little brother to death, threw his body into a bag, and staged a kidnapping. On October 7th, she allegedly woke up at 4 a.m. to dispose of the body near their residence in Ludiana. The boy's body was found later that day and police were called. During questioning, the sister confessed to her crime and confessed that she had reached a breaking point. Other sources claim that the young girl killed her brother after he spotted her sister, talking to an older individual who lived in the same locality as them. The boy could have potentially seen his sister with the same man again on the 6th, which led to his murder. The young girl's alleged partner is yet to be identified. And number one, woman murders sister to be with her husband. Saba Khan, 27, was living with her sister, Saima Khan, 34. Saima's husband, Hafiz Rahman, the couple's four children, and the sister's parents at their home in Luton. On the evening of May 26 in 2017, Saba called her sister back home, claiming that her children were crying uncontrollably for their mother. Saima texted back, on my way. The text exchanged happened around 11 p.m. that night, and by 12 a.m., Saba made a frantic call to police, claiming that her sister had just been killed. Police arriving at the scene immediately questioned the seemingly distraught Saba over the bloodstains on her arms. Saba claimed that the stains were a result of cuts she got from the shattered glass that the alleged robbers had shattered. Police went inside the residence to find Saima Khan lying lifeless on the floor of the downstairs living room. She had been stabbed repeatedly. A coroner's report later revealed that Saima had been stabbed 68 times. Saima initially claimed that her sister had died as a result of resisting a looting that was taking place at the home. However, Saima's seven-year-old daughter, who heard the commotion and woke up, reportedly called out to her aunt, who responded that she was busy killing a mouse. Police footage after being called at the scene revealed a seemingly distraught Saba recounting the incident and stated that she had tried to hug her sister to stop the bleeding, but she died almost instantly. However, later reports revealed something more sinister. Saba had premeditated her sister's killing over Rahman. Saba and Rahman had been in a relationship for the past four years. However, Rahman's interest in Saba had been waning. In text messages that were retrieved from Saba's phone, the relationship had taken an obsessive turn after Hafiz tried to break the relationship off. She claimed in a series of text messages to Rahman, nothing can stop me from loving you, not even you. Saba was also in contact with a fixer in Pakistan, whom she was giving 5,000 pounds for the murder of her sister. However, Saba was in a time crunch after Saima and Hafiz announced they were planning on moving out by the end of the month. This prompted Saba to stab her sister under a guise the first chance she got. Saba had also reportedly been searching for poisons and other ways to dispose of bodies in the months leading up to Saima's stabbing. Rahman was reportedly distraught after learning of the murder and claimed to be in great shame over the affair. Saba Khan is currently serving a 22-year-long sentence for the murder of her sister. Would you rather have a petty but highly embarrassing argument break out at dinner during your partner's first time meeting your family, or spend three hours discussing politics with a die-hard supporter of a candidate you deeply despise? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.